Following up on my promise on more PC content, this is the Radeon RX 5600 XT, a mid-range graphics card from AMD. They've just released it and in today's video, let's test it out and see how it handles 1080p gaming. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and if you do end up finding this video interesting, consider subscribing and turning on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's now get this video started. Let's kick things off with some gameplay. This is Fortnite running on the Radeon uh, 5600 XT and the gameplay here is really smooth. AMD launched the 5600 XT this year at CES. It goes up against the 1660 Ti from Nvidia and at a similar price point, it offers much better performance. The average FPS on Fortnite was around 150 FPS and the game never did below 60. Even the 1% lows were at 80 FPS. Moving on to another popular esports title, we have CSGO. We've got an average frame rate of 239 FPS here. So even if you have a 240Hz monitor, you can pair it with the 5600 XT and enjoy CSGO. Of course, CSGO is mainly CPU bound, so the results here aren't really surprising. Because our test bench, it is a Ryzen 5 3600 with 16 gigs of dual channel DDR4 memory on a B450 LE Gigabyte motherboard and a 256 gig SATA SSD. All these games, they're being run at 1080p at max or close to max settings, by the way. Next, we have another CPU intensive title, GTA 5. The graphics have been dialed all the way up and the average is 106 FPS with a 1% low of 83 FPS. Now remember when I said how 5600 XT outpaces the 1660 Ti by a, by a fair margin? Well, Nvidia responded to this by launching a special no frills version of the RTX 2060, the EVGA RTX 2060 KO. It brought the price down to nearly 5600 XT levels, but still maintained a healthy lead. Of course, AMD hit right back by pushing out a new BIOS to the 5600 XT and this increased the power limits leading to higher clock speeds and better boost clocks. By the way, all our testing, it was done with the new BIOS. Next, we have Red Dead Redemption 2. Again, with the graphics maxed out, we got an average of 59 FPS here and a 1% low of 36 FPS. Yes, Red Dead isn't that well optimized for PC and it kind of shows with the gameplay. However, if you dial down the graphics just a little bit, frame rates can be pushed over 60 FPS and the overall experience is much better. The card we are testing out right now, it's Gigabyte's Gaming OC, which is 6 gigs of VRAM and it comes with a pretty beefy triple fan cooler as well as uh, well-designed heat pipe. So we also get RGB and all the cool stuff here. So we are getting some of the best 5600 XT performance with this one. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it was run at the highest preset and it ran at an average of 92 FPS with the one person low dipping down to 70. Now, in games like these, the new BIOS comes right into play. That said, the numbers here might not be representative of all the 5600 XTs out there. There would probably be a few cheaper variants from vendors who might cut a few corners, maybe have a smaller cooler or lesser heat pipes, we might see higher temperatures and a performance tip, maybe. Next, we have Star Wars uh, Jedi of the Fallen Order and we have a very smooth 103 FPS here. Again, max details with a 1% low of 71 FPS. Now, another thing that might be affected by the newer BIOS and increased thermals is the overclocking headroom. Do you wanna see us test that out in a future video? Let me know in the comments below. So finally, wrapping this one up with yet another Battle Royale title, Apex Legends, we got an average of 133 FPS with a 1% low of 78 FPS. Again, we have the max graphical settings here. So basically, if you want a game at 1080p with ultra or very high settings on most titles, then the RX 5600 XT is a very good choice. Barring Red Dead Redemption 2, the 5600 XT get the 1% low over 60 FPS at ultra settings in all the games that we tried and that happened to include quite a few popular AAA titles. So we didn't really face any screen tearing issues and the gameplay remained smooth throughout. The card also managed to remain quite cool with the default fan curve I saw 
the Gigabyte 5600X, the head temperatures of up to 75 degrees Celsius, which isn't really that bad. Of course, now a lot will depend on how AMD price it, uh, price it at uh, in India since the RTX 2060 is available from 25,000 rupees. And from our initial impressions, it looks like the 2060 might still be ahead on performance. So the price difference is only around say 2,000 rupees then the 2060 might still be better, uh, it might be a better choice. But if AMD and their board partners manage to price the 5600 XT around the suggested 20,000 rupee price point, then we might have a new king of 1080p gaming on our hands. After all, it's miles better than the 1660 Ti. Uh, that retails for around 21,000. Now, that's all from my end. Do let me know what you guys think about the 5600 XT. Is it worth it? Is it not? Would you want to get one? And of course, would you like to see me continue doing more videos on graphic cards and uh, more PC related content? Uh, would you like to see the 20, uh, 2060 uh, and the 1660 Ti uh, compared with this card, uh, with, the, uh, with the 5600 XT? Would you like to see a side by side gaming comparison or something? Let me know in the comments below and I guess that's pretty much it. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on how you felt about this video. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name is Ash. You've been watching C4E Tech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.